So first I'll look at the background of Diana, and then I'll move to the mental health and personality factors. Diana was born in Sandringham, Norfolk, England, on July 1, 1961. At that time, she was known as the Honorable Diana Frances Spencer. She was raised with two sisters and one brother. A second brother died before Diana was born. The Spencer family was royalty. Her father, John Spencer, was Viscount Althorpe, and her mother, Frances Spencer, was Viscountess Althorpe. Diana's parents would argue frequently. She was seven when they divorced. Diana described her childhood as very unstable and very unhappy. In 1975, her father inherited the title of Earl Spencer. After this, Diana was known as Lady Diana. Diana did not perform well in school, although she was active in a number of non-academic interests like ballet, tap dancing, swimming, diving, and playing the piano. In November 1977, when Diana was 16, she met Charles, Prince of Wales. At that time, Charles was dating Lady Sarah, Diana's older sister. In 1980, Charles took an interest in Diana, and they developed a romantic relationship. They became engaged on February 6, 1981. Charles was 13 years older than Diana and had feelings for another woman named Camilla Parker Bowles, who at this time was married to another man. Diana would later report that Charles thought of their relationship as more of a business arrangement and not something related to love. Diana and Charles would be married on July 29, 1981 at St. Paul's Cathedral. There were 600,000 spectators lining the streets to watch the ceremony, and the wedding was viewed on television by 750 million people. It was considered a fairy tale wedding. Diana's dress had a 25-foot train. The couple was transported in a horse-drawn carriage. Despite this, Diana recounted that this was the worst day of her life. So we see a large difference between how people interpreted the event and what she was actually experiencing. I find this interesting because I think part of the excitement about watching an event like that is that people can imagine what Diana was feeling and feel the same way. It's like a vicarious enjoyment. And of course, the whole time along, she was suffering tremendously. So we see some irony there. Prince William was born in June of 1982, and Prince Harry was born in September of 1984. The marriage between Charles and Diana was not going well, but it does seem clear that Charles always maintained some type of relationship with Camilla, even if it was not a sexual relationship in the early years of his marriage to Diana. Diana suspected Charles had more than one other lover. Charles would later say that he did not resume his relationship with Camilla until 1986, which was after he realized his marriage was irretrievably broken down. Diana and Charles would divorce in August of 1996. When she was married to Charles, Diana had been referred to as Her Royal Highness. After the divorce, she was referred to as Diana, Princess of Wales. Interestingly, many people refer to Diana as Princess Diana, which is a title she never actually held. During the time Diana was married to Charles, she was a very active member in a number of charities. She traveled all around the world and met different leaders, and she was relentlessly pursued by people in the media like the paparazzi. These are independent photographers who try to take these pictures and sell them to different media outlets. After the divorce, she continued with altruistic work and remained in public life. Diana, Princess of Wales, would die in the early morning on August 31, 1997. She was in an automobile crash that occurred in a tunnel in Paris, France. She was 36 years old. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. One of the challenges to figuring out Diana's personality is looking at the difference between how a person really is and how their persona is. Clearly, Diana was a public figure, and it makes sense that she was different in private than she was in public. With this in mind, let's take a look at her potential personality profile. Diana's level of openness to experience was high. She had an appreciation for the arts like dance and music. She was creative, and she experienced emotions intensely. As far as conscientiousness, she was described as hardworking, organized, motivated, and unafraid of hard work. Clearly, there was some evidence of impulsivity and irresponsibility, but on balance, her level of conscientiousness was probably 
higher than average. Now looking at extroversion, even though she acted more extroverted later in her life, I think overall her level of extroversion was probably below average. She was described as quiet, shy, and a deep thinker. Somebody can be low in extroversion and still appear to be extroverted, like talking in public and attending all the different events that she did. In looking at agreeableness, even though there were certainly moments of low trust, overall I think her level of agreeableness was high. She was altruistic, straightforward, and modest. Now, the last trait is neuroticism. Here we see her level was high. She was depressed, anxious, and did have difficulty resisting temptation at times. Now, as far as mental health, Diana was treated by a few different mental health professionals. One said that she was a very unhappy girl battling against an oppressive royal family. Others viewed Diana's mental health status as more worrisome. It seems quite likely that Diana had more going on than just very unhappy girl syndrome. She reported that she had bulimia. It was most active during her marriage to Charles. This disorder has a high level of comorbidity with other mental disorders, most notably depression. Over 90% of people with this disorder would also qualify as having depression. Therefore, it would make sense that Diana was depressed as well, but I'm not aware of her formal diagnosis. During that same time period, Diana also harmed herself and attempted suicide several times. It was reported that Diana would have mood swings going from compassionate and carefree in one moment to sarcastic and insecure in the next. One of the theories that comes up frequently when talking about Diana is the idea that she had borderline personality disorder or perhaps simply borderline personality features. This is an interesting theory that would explain a lot of the behavior that she exhibited and would be consistent with the other disorders that she was thought to have. Borderline personality disorder is a cluster B personality disorder. It's in the same cluster as antisocial, narcissistic, and histrionic. This is called the dramatic erratic cluster. There are nine symptom criteria in this disorder. Now, even though there's no way of knowing if she had this disorder or not, we can see if her behavior aligns with the symptoms. It's worth noting, though, that even if there is an alignment, that doesn't mean she had the disorder. Only someone who treated her could have made that determination. So looking at the symptoms, symptom number one is the individual exhibits frantic efforts to avoid abandonment. This has been reported, but it's not clear if she actually had this symptom. Number two, this is an unstable relationship pattern, like a love-hate cycle. So the person moves between idealizing another person and devaluing them. It's not clear if she went back and forth that way, like the love and hate. It's a possibility, but I don't see any real clear evidence that points to that. Now, the third symptom is identity disturbance. This one is difficult to know because what she did was very unusual, right? She moved from being Lady Diana to Diana, Princess of Wales. Most people don't make that type of jump in their life. So it's an uncommon change. I think anyone would struggle with their identity during that type of transition. Now, the fourth symptom is impulsivity in two areas that are potentially self-damaging. Throwing oneself downstairs and some of the other self-harm behavior we see here does seem to align. Symptom number five is suicidal behavior. Diana reported this several times. Symptom six is affective instability, otherwise known as emotional dysregulation. This was reported several times. Number seven is a chronic feeling of emptiness. This criterion is interesting because if somebody was depressed, they would likely meet this. So we see the overlap there. Symptom eight is inappropriate or intense anger or difficulty controlling anger. I'm not sure about this one. If she did have anger problems, she seemed to hide it pretty well, at least most of the time. This brings us to the last symptom, symptom number nine. This is paranoid ideation or severe dissociation. Paranoia was reported as it related to Charles, but Charles was actually cheating. So it's really hard to determine if she was being paranoid or realistic. As we can see, Diana may have had several borderline personality features, but this theory about BPD is challenging in another way. Usually with a personality disorder, there would be symptoms when somebody was an adolescent. Now, maybe that was the case with Diana, but it's really not clear. We don't have a lot of information about borderline symptoms when she was young. This could actually be said of all the disorders that Diana may have had. 
If she had never met Charles and never moved into that life, perhaps she would have been fine. It might have been the stress combined with her predispositions that led to the onset of the disorders. One thing I find interesting with Diana is that after she was divorced, her functioning appeared to get better. She really seemed to find her way. She embraced her role as a public figure. She was confident. She seemed stronger. I don't know if she was happy. I don't know if things were really better, but they appeared to be better. This is consistent with the idea that her symptom expressions occurred because of stress, like the stress pushed her over the edge, and when the stress was gone, she returned back to having no symptoms.